boys and girls, good morning. I'm so glad to get to talk to you today about friends because I know you have lots of friends. Jesus had lots of friends. And we know why he had friends because God says to have friends, a person must show themselves friendly. And he was a friend to people. He always showed himself to be friendly. He had three friends that he especially loved. And he went to visit them often. Their names were Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Kind of a picture of them. He went to their home and they lived in Bethany. It was about two miles from Jerusalem, not very far. And he would go into their house and visit with them and tell them stories about God. And one day he was talking to them and Mary sat down at his feet and just listened with all she could. She gave him full attention. But Martha was doing something good, too. She was in the kitchen getting lunch ready or dinner. And all at once she realized she was doing all the work. Mary was just sitting in the floor listening. So she called, Lord, make Mary come and help me. I don't have any help. Have her to come in here and help me. But Jesus said, Martha, Martha, you're troubled about a lot of things. You're trying to do too much. Mary's chosen the best part. She's sitting there listening about God. And that's more important than fixing the food and getting the dinner just right. Now, it was good. Martha was doing a good deed. And we can be doing good deeds, but we want to do the best thing. And the best thing is studying about God and listening about Him and listening to Jesus. And that's the part that Mary chose. One day, Jesus was back uh, we don't know whether he was in Jerusalem, but he was not at Bethany. And he was with his apostles. And a messenger came and said, Oh, Lord, the one you love, Lazarus, is very sick. He's at home, very ill. Now, a good friend like Jesus, we would think, would leave everything and go to be with him. But Jesus didn't go right then because he knew what was going to happen. And he knew it was going to be all right. And we have to trust Jesus to know that he always knows what we need and that it will be all right. He waited two days. And after two days, the messenger came and said, Well, Lord, now he's dead. Lazarus has died. Well, Jesus took his apostles and he said, We're going over to Bethany. Our friend Lazarus is sleeping. And they said, Well, Lord, if he's sleeping, he'll wake up. But Jesus said, No, he's dead. But Jesus knew he would wake up. And when he got nearly to Bethany, nearly to Mary and Martha and Lazarus' house, Martha came running out to meet him all the way down the path and got there before he even got to their house. And she said, now, if you'd been here, our brother wouldn't have died. But we know that even now, whatever you want to happen will happen. Now, we have seen in the last Sunday School lessons how Jesus had power over the wind when the wind was blowing the ship back and forth and they were so afraid, Jesus said, peace, be still. And he spoke to the wind and it obeyed him. And we saw him have power over the water so that he could walk across the water to the apostles. And now we're going to see that even bigger than that, Jesus has power over death. And we're so glad for that. Because when they told him, Jesus Martha said, well, even what you ask for now will happen. Jesus said, he's going to rise again. And she said, oh, I know he'll rise in the resurrection when everybody rises, but he's not rising now. And Jesus said, I am the resurrection. He has power over death. He is the resurrection himself. And he went out there to the place where they had buried him. <clears throat> First, he saw Mary because Mary was crying and grieving and all the friends were crying and Jesus cried too. He wept. The tears ran down his face because he loved Lazarus and he saw his friends grieving and hurting, Mary and Martha. And he wept too. But he said, go roll the stone away from the cave where you've buried him. Show me where he is. And Martha said, oh, we don't want to roll the stone away because he's been there four days. And He's probably smelling bad by now. His body's decaying. But he said, roll the stone away. And they did. 
And when Jesus got up close to the grave, not real close, but pretty close, he called out in a big voice, Lazarus, come forth. And they all waited to see what's going to happen. Why would he call Lazarus back? He's been dead four days. But they looked, and there came Lazarus right out of that grave with his grave clothes still wrapped around him. He had white cloths all over him. He was wrapped in white to bury him like they did in those days, and they had placed him in the cave. And he came out still wrapped up. And Jesus said, unwrap him, loose him, and let him go. And they took those cloths all off of him and let him go. And he was alive. And everybody rejoiced. The Jews who'd come out there saw Jesus do that great miracle. And some of them believed that he was the Son of God because they saw it. But some of them didn't. They wanted to go back to Jerusalem and say, now everybody's going to worship him. We need to get rid of him. So some believed and some didn't. But Mary and Martha believed, and they were so happy to have their brother Lazarus back with them. One day they were at a house of Simeon, eating um, and having a banquet, and Lazarus was there too. And people came out to see him because he had been dead, and they wanted to see, was that really true he was alive? But he was. Mary brought out a big jar of ointment, like special perfumed oil, and it was a pound a lot and she poured it on Jesus head and feet and wiped it with her hair the hair of her head she let her hair down which was probably up in a bun and dried his feet with them that's how much she loved him and some of the disciples Judas said oh you shouldn't have poured out all that expensive perfume that cost a year to make that much money you could have given that to the poor but Jesus said, no, she's done a good thing. You'll always have the poor with you. Take care of the poor. Be kind to the poor. But she's done this for me, a gift for me, because I'm going to be dead. I'm going to be buried. And she's anointed me for my burial. And every time you tell it good stories, you will tell about Mary giving that special gift to Jesus. We love to hear the stories of Jesus' friends. And these were three of his very dear friends and the special things they did for him and the special things he did for them. And I hope you have a lot of friends and you find good things to do for them like Jesus did for his friends. Okay, for our craft, we're gonna need construction paper and some kind of crayon or chalk. I went to Dollar General and got all this and they only had colored chalk, so we'll just be real Eastery. I'm going to draw my best picture of an out outline of Lazarus. And Mr. David, you could have done better on this. Mine's going to turn out looking like a gingerbread boy. But the good thing about chalk is you can kind of redo it with your hand. But that's going to be our Lazarus. <laughs> And if you have some googly eyes, you can put those right there. I didn't find any of those. I forgot to get those. And if you have masking tape, we're going to wrap Lazarus up, putting a bandage on his head. At the end, you could even cut him out and put him on a popsicle stick if you want to. That's why I have a popsicle stick sticking out like that. I'm gonna use masking tape because it's obviously so much easier to come off. And if you go outside the lines with the tape, it's okay because you're gonna cut it out at the end or have somebody help you cut it out. That's a mess of fun. You think the white looks better? Hmm. 
I wish I had googly eyes down. He is looking kind of cute. What would you be different? Put some on his arms. Save one popsicle stick for the back to glue it down to, tape it down to. And you can practice saying, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus, come forth. You can put a smile on his face because now he's alive. I like my little Lazarus. You can make that with any color construction paper. Use a crayon or chalk masking tape and you don't even have to have this but I think it's fun. Do you like that? He looks so happy to be alive. I guess he's the only man who had to die twice. Okay we're gonna use this Marvin's Amazing Magic Pens for our coloring picture. You can use any kind of marker you have or crayons at home. And you can find any type of coloring picture online. I got this at Oriental Trading, but every year we've printed one off of a free coloring page at DLTK. DLTK Kids. We'll put the link. Okay, the baby chicks are growing up and they've never been outside to enjoy the fresh air and the sunshine. I thought you might like to see the kind of food they eat and maybe help me feed them. I was thinking about putting down some fresh, soft, fresh, soft pine chips in a little swimming pool and then letting them play outside in this pool today. I hope you come outside too and get some fresh air and sun sunshine. We'll see if they fly away. I hope not. It would be hard to catch baby chicks when we have that many. Oh, I almost forgot one thing. They need water. They need fresh water and a soft bed and food. A little more around there. And then we're going to scoop as much of this in there as we can. I went back to the tractor supply company today and they had baby ducks out there. And our chicks have really grown compared to the other ones out there. Mercy. Ours have eaten a whole container of this food already. Let's snap it down. There we go. So that one right there, that little brand, that black one, it lived in the water dish all night. It's done it twice, actually. Let me see if I can't get the brown ones. This got to be, this guy's got to be a rooster. Okay, let's put him over here in the swimming pool. Okay, all six are in. They're thirsty, aren't they? Let's get some water for them. Remember, we need to get water.
Oh, see how they drink? <laughs> I think they're happy to be out here. <laughs> He's pecking on the side. See how big they're getting? And this ye little yellow one right there is drinking water. For the first time they hear an airplane and they hear a car horn honk. They'll settle down in a minute. They're just not quite sure what's going on because they've lived inside all their lives. They just love baby chicks. But these are just about to outgrow our inside and we're gonna head to a farm as soon as it gets warmer. The same farm where we saw the sheep back when we talked about David being a shepherd. That same farm with the lambs and the sheep is gonna take these chickens and see if they'll grow up and lay eggs. <laughs> the black ones are a little bit more mean than the yellow. Next time I'm just going to get brown, I think. Because the yellow ones grew up like lightning speed and the little brown ones are still small. <laughs> 